This is the Ventris Dual Reverb from Source Audio. Now, it's a dual reverb because there are two DSP chips in this box, which means that you can run any two of the 12 included algorithms that they've included with this thing. And I have to say, I consider this to be the best reverb pedal on the market. And I've not been paid to say that. I, I've had the Big Sky, I've had the Space, I've had many different reverb pedals over the years. And this one is definitely the best one. Uh, this is going to be a lengthy video, so grab a cup of tea, a coffee, a whiskey, whatever your poison is, we're really going to go deep into this thing. So I've hooked up the Ventris into the first two effects loops in my Line 6 Helix. That's so that we can have true stereo functionality. I'm using the high watt amp model on the Helix and this is the clean tone. So fairly clean, but if I dig in a little bit, I'm gonna get some distortion. Starting with the room algorithm, this is everything pretty much at 12 o'clock. So, let's have a little tweak. Let's bring the mix down. So we've got a short decay. We will uh, toy with control one and control two. And we'll have a little bit of treble roll off as well. Currently the pre-delay is at minimum. That means the reverb kicks in as soon as I play. So right there we have quite a dry, dry reverb sound. There's not too many reflections. We could bring the mix right off. And then dial in the perfect amount for just that amount of reverb that kind of fills out the sound but is not immediately obvious. And it's about there. Maybe eight o'clock on the knob. Okay, so, so far, nothing too outlandish. The thing that I've noticed with the room algorithm is you can push it quite far. So let's kind of reset my settings and let's just crank the time value to maximum. So as you might be able to hear, even on even on the bog standard kind of room algorithm, you can get those huge paddish textures. And a lot of pedals on their room algorithms don't allow you to do that. So it's very flexible. You could spend a lot of your time just on this one engine.
So that's kind of a slapbacky sort of effect. Turn the mix off, dry guitar, dial in just the right amount, which I reckon is gonna be about eight o'clock as before. All right, increase the uh, pre-delay to a really high amount. And you could really hear the kind of latency there. But that gives you a, an alternative to using a delay pedal. If you just want kind of a sound that, that will fill out what you're playing. Quite a nice subtle effect there. Let's go back to something a bit more midway on the time. Bring the pre-delay closer a little bit and lots of the modulation. A little less on the treble. Staying on the neck pickup. delay you can hear there that the effect is happening as soon as I play and if you listen in the tails there. You can hear that kind of warbling effect, which is the modulation, because I've got it set at quite a high value if we go the other direction with it. It's not as animated now. Brought it back a little bit, a little bit more. So let's just roll these control knobs off completely and let's go a little bit crazy and crank the treble. Bring the time down ever so slightly, a little more pre-delay. quite a convincing room sound, quite natural sounding. We just need to dial that in 
to the sort of correct amount for the effect that we're going for. <laughs> back to the bridge pickup so we've sort of covered subtle let's have one more blast at something quite extreme Now you might be able to hear there that's got quite a piercing quality to it. We can roll off the treble to kind of deal with that. And you can hear that during the tail it progressively gets more dark sounding. So that's the room engine. Let's move on to the hall. Okay, now we're on the hall L engine. And once again, here is my clean tone. So just a quick blast of everything pretty much at 12 o'clock. The mix is a little lower. So you can hear right off the bat that's quite a nice ambient sound and it's quite big it's quite big sounding as well we could go bigger let's crank the time and just play a chord Let's bring the mix up. So this engine is great for kind of just sustained chords that you want to you want to kind of blend together with the effect. And if we went to 100% mix and then we went back to that maximum setting on the time pad machine basically but let's explore this I'm just going to randomly turn some of these knobs
So that's obviously a very short setting for this engine, but you still have a fair amount of sustain. Obviously because it's a haul. Over to the neck pickup. to your playing in a, in a much different way to the room engine. Let's crank the pre-delay. So same sort of thing I showed with the room. You can create quite a large gap between your playing and the effect kicking in. Turn the mix down slightly. So by using the pre delay, you could set up quite a cool effect and then you can ensure that it doesn't drown out your uh, your playing. Let's go back to the paddy side of things. Set something up like this. Back to the bridge pickup. shoegazy sound with this box. Let's change the type of hall that we're working with. That's what control 2 does. Uh, I'm not I can't quite remember what control 1 does, but you can check the manual out at the source audio website. <laughs> just really, really fills out the sound. Next up is E-Dome. Now we're gonna explore the E-Dome engine. Here's my dry tone. And all of the knobs, as before, pretty much at 12 o'clock. the gate you could hear that the e-dome is a much fuller and more in your face sound at the 12 o'clock settings when compared to the room and the hall engines so <laughs> Huge 
huge sounds, this is the one that I would probably recommend you start with. Let's have a little play. Let's turn the time up to maximum and just play a few chords. <laughs> So way more sustain with E-Dome versus Hall and Room. And it kind of has that freeze, electroharmonics freeze quality to the sound, especially when you crank the time. And there are a lot of kind of interesting fluttering noises when you send multiple chords into it. Uh, and you get all of these interesting interactions Let's back it off completely. Let's go the other way, see what that sounds like. So, quite metallic sounding actually, but in a good way. Let's go over to the neck pickup. Let's roll off the mix altogether and just dial in a very subtle amount of that. So with the time and the mix set to very low levels, you could kind of get room sounds out of the E-Dome algorithm. And we could play with these controls. Maybe roll off all of the treble. Kind of hear it's darker. A bit more time. Let's set it midway. Let's set the mix to 100% and we'll, we'll just start experimenting. So I reckon with more on the time value, tremolo picking could could probably get quite huge with this mode. similar thing.
much more definition when you do that and a more aggressive sound. Let's come back to something a little more sensible. Back to the bridge pickup. <laughs> Let's experiment with rolling off both control knobs and seeing how they affect the sound. So when control one is at minimum, the reverb itself is quite flat sounding, but if we crank that, you can hear that there's this blooming sound within it. Almost like a delay is being added. And there's more low end too. Control 2, that's modulation it sounds like to me. So yeah, Control 1 is definitely adding kind of low end and more of a mushy density. So up next is the True Spring engine. So this is the True Spring engine. Here's my clean tone. And everything at 12 o'clock. Springy. Let's start toying with some controls. So let's reduce the time first and we'll go for more of a subtle effect. We'll bring the mix down and I'll roll some of the treble off. <laughs> let's have a little bit more time. That's a little too, little too short. There we go. So that's quite a nice subtle effect. That would uh, fill out whatever you're playing without dominating. Let's go for something a little more in your face. So bring the mix up, crank the time, put that treble back to noon. So already that sounds kind of like, kind of like an actual spring reverb that's on the edge of, of oscillating. So I should say I'm not a massive expert when it comes to authentic spring sounds, but that sounds very, very good to me. That 
kind of watery, drippy sound. I don't think I've ever really heard that from another pedal before. bad surf impression. Into the neck pickup. Let's turn that pre-delay up, start turning some of these knobs a bit more. of changes how you perceive that sound with a low pre-delay it sounds more kind of as if you were playing through a small combo uh, with the spring reverb but when you when you turn up the pre-delay it doesn't have that effect <laughs> Control 2 changes the type of um, spring tank that you're using. So let's just go through those. I'm not sure how many there are. Sounds like there might be two or three. I prefer this first one, um, but yeah, check the manual for those kind of details. Ultimately, what I notice about the True Spring engine is that it really responds to what you're playing. It doesn't feel like the springs themselves are one dynamic. It really does feel alive. Next up is the plate engine. Now we're going to explore the plate engine and here is my dry tone again. <laughs> Everything pretty much at noon. <laughs> Definitely less low end 
off the bat. Let's have a little experiment. Let's crank the time like I've been doing with the other engines. Play some chords. <laughs> So, not as full sounding as some of the other engines, but I think that kind of is one of the characteristics of, of Plate. It's got that metallic sheen that you would get from a real, a real Plate reverb. So let's set that to a small value that's quite subtle Ah, so control two changes the type of plate. Ah, that's a that's a small small plate. Sounds like to the neck pickup and the next plate. So that's where the huge sounds lie. Control 2 at maximum for the largest plate, I'm assuming. And then a pretty moderate value on the time. So what I really like about that actually is that it doesn't really sound like a plate. It, again, it sounds kind of quite paddy and uh, synthetic. You could get both of those things out of this engine. You can get the authentic plate sound. But you can also get the spacey sounds. Hundred percent mix. So let's try and isolate 
we already know that control 2 changes the type of plate let's try and see what control 1 is actually doing right so that is dealing with the low end you can either completely filter the low end out or you can boost it that's what it sounds like i really like that boost delay and minimum. So back to the dry tone just a second. And then to that sound. So even a really short time value on the plate engine and that bass boost can kind of bring your chords to life. It gives them something, some fullness that that it's lacking without the pedal. But it's not swamping the mix either, so you could definitely play and, and have that as a kind of always on pedal. Back to the bridge. Next up is the lo-fi engine. So we're going to explore the lo-fi engine now. Here's my dry tone. And everything pretty much at 12 o'clock. So we have kind of a distorted effect built into the reverb there. Let's crank the time and play some chords. chords congeal together. Let's turn some of these knobs. Right, so... Looks like control one controls the amount of distortion.
exactly sure what control two is doing. It sounds like it might be modulation depth, but again, if you go to the Source Audio website and grab the manual, you can read about all of those details there. So, as you can hear, you can get some nice fuzzy pads from this. But it can also be subtle. Let's go over to the neck pickup. Next up is the Modverb engine. Now we're going to explore the Modverb engine and this is my dry tone. Everything pretty much at 12 o'clock as before. So it's this engine that made me uh, hook the thing up in stereo because as you can hear, if you're on headphones or good speakers, there's a very nice panning effect. Let's turn some of these knobs and have a little experiment. All the way up on the time. So control two changes the rate of modulation. Control 
control one changes the depth, but when you go past 12 o'clock, it kind of switches modes. I don't know if you can hear that click that just happened, but that's where it switches the mode. So if you want kind of the classic kind of gated effect almost, you need to turn up control one. Having it at the top end of the first mode, it's much more subtle. So I've seen some people online wondering if they can get by without a modulation pedal, um, whether if they got the Ventress they could just use Modverb um, for their modulation sounds. Traveller could certainly, certainly do that. are quite limited in the amount of modulation sounds that you can get currently because Source Audio have not released um, the editor or any of the additional back engines that they've talked about um, coding and releasing so maybe we will get I don't know a version of Modverb that gives us choruses and flanges and that kind of thing right now it's basically limited to tremolo I would say <laughs> Let's crank the pre-delay quite high. Okay, so that's one thing that I'm not too keen on. Um, you get the panning effect on the dry guitar. I'd like to see a preference to have it only on the reverb.
I really like that when you use the pre-delay to sort of effectively create a delay effect out of this engine. Next up, we're going to explore the shimmer. Now we'll explore the shimmer engine. Here is my dry tone. <laughs> Everything pretty much at noon. So my initial impressions are that it's a, a very clear shimmer sound with not a lot of mud. And let's dig in and, and see what kind of sounds we can get. Let's crank the time, because I've been doing that for a lot of these demos. <laughs> So, even when I play fairly, fairly fast, when I go through the chords, when I go through the chords quickly, it doesn't get swampy. <laughs> Little toy with the control knobs.
One thing I'm noticing, particularly with this mode, is that when I move the knobs during the decay of the reverb, you get nice smooth transitions. So if I have control one fairly low, for example, and I play a chord and then move the knob during the decay, <laughs> It's a very smooth transition and you can imagine that connecting an expression pedal to the Ventress in order to perform uh, perform that kind of automation on the fly with your foot could lead to some really interesting uh, really interesting sounds. Let's experiment with the uh, time at minimum. And we'll increase the pre delay. So, if I just want a hint of shimmer, you could kind of get something much more subtle, even though the mix is actually quite high. We could bring it down even more, make it even more subtle. Let's crank both of the control knobs. So I really like that to have a kind of synthetic texture behind what I'm playing. And if we crank the time, we get even more of an effect. for song intros or ambient passages that's perfect but you could kind of hear that my main guitar my main guitar is still quite dry so what I want to demonstrate uh, in particular with the shimmer uh, reverb is this A plus B functionality so effectively the Ventress is a dual DSP box which means there are two DSP chips inside of it which means we can run two of the algorithms at once so if I come over to the B mode you'll see we flip over to room and let's just dial that in to kind of just just to kind of wet my main guitar a little bit nothing too nothing too crazy all right, let's let's go with that, but come down on the mix. So we've got a room reverb, and we've got a shimmer. And if we come over to the middle position on the switch, A plus B mode, we can run both of those sounds at the same time. Hopefully now you can hear that 
the main kind of core tone of my guitar is um, it's still atmospheric sounding. It still has a sense of space to it. But underneath that, we have this paddy texture that, that sort of develops these interesting harmonies in the background. I'm on my neck pickup now. Let's just flick over to Shimmer by itself. You can hear that my guitar is much drier, even though we have the Shimmer sitting behind it. Back to A plus B. And finally, I'd just like to demonstrate the shimmer at 100% wet, maximum time. Roll off the treble completely, back to the bridge pickup. Let's move on to Echo Verb. So we're going to explore Echo Verb now. Here's my dry tone. And everything at noon. So this engine essentially gives you a delay and a reverb at the same time. So control two will crossfade between the delay and the reverb. So that's just delay. And that is just reverb. So let's set that just under noon. Control one controls the delay feedback. So at minimum, you just get one 
repeat, but it could be quite extreme at the higher values. <laughs> I don't know what that was. I lost count. 28 repeats, something ridiculous like that. But that's quite good for um, those kind of classic shoegazy tremolo things. So that's control one. The time value controls the decay of the reverb. So here's max. So you can hear that it's really interactive with what you're playing. I was playing very softly there and a couple of the chords um, were a lot harder and you get these nice resonances that build up within the reverb tank. <laughs> dial in a few sounds a few different sounds I should say that the pre delay sets the delay time so at minimum in fact let's set it to 100% delay <laughs> nine o'clock's kind of a slap back thing o'clock more of a rhythmic maybe 500 millisecond type of thing and then three o'clock obviously a very long delay time I'll also say that when you set the delay time using the pre-delay knob, you do get those kind of classic analog squirrely pitch artifacts. But when you use the option tap switch, you don't. <laughs> get a little bit of a judder when you tap in the tempo using the, the foot switch that doesn't really bother me that much to be honest I'm more bothered by the squirrely sounds because obviously in the context of a live show where you need to resync with the drummer you don't really want too many um, inharmonic sounds which is what <laughs> Which is what turning the pre-delay knob is going to give you. Let's do more of a slapback kind of thing. And we'll bring the mix 
down to about nine ish. <laughs> to my neck pickup. full decay but will bias kind of the mix more towards the delay so the idea is is that the reverb um, is just going to sit underneath the delay creating this pad like texture Bring the feedback up. Change the delay time. So that's pretty much the echo verb. We're going to move on to the swell algorithm. This is the swell algorithm, and here's my dry tone. <laughs> So immediately, all knobs at 12 o'clock, we have a nice kind of auto swell type of effect. Control one is the envelope gain parameter. And I think that basically equates to the sensitivity of the swell. So when I have that set to a lower value, I could be more confident that my chords are in fact 
going to be swelled. No matter how hard I play them. Whereas if I have that value set to maximum and I play hard, the chords kind of cut through and they, they almost skip the uh, swell stage. So it's basically threshold. And then control two is the swell time. So if we have control one fairly low and control two fairly high, it takes a lot longer for the swell to reach full volume. If I turn control to low, then it swells in my chords much quicker. subtle effect. So let's go 100% on the mix, more treble, more on the uh, time. Let's have a fairly quick swell time. And let's just play some single note kind of things. So that is basically a really nice synth pad sound that will sustain for as long as you want. At lower time values. You obviously don't get the build up. Let's just do one final sound here. We'll roll off all of the treble. We'll stay at about, I don't know, one o'clock, two o'clock on the time. We'll go over to my neck pickup. swell engine is that it's a little easier to kind of predict um, which of your notes are going to be swelled and which of your notes are not 
going to be swell because it relates heavily to to the dynamics of your playing it seems to respond quite quickly So I'm really impressed. And I think just because I really love this sound, I'm going to go back to the kind of synthetic pad thing that I had uh, and just, just play out on that. Next, we'll explore the offspring algorithm. This is an exploration of the offspring algorithm. Here is my dry tone. And all knobs at noon. So I'm not 100% sure what the Offspring model is doing. It sounds like a combination of reverb, comb filtering and delay. Let's have a little play. So it sounds like pre-delay is controlling the spacing uh, between each delay tap, if you like. changes the amount of low end. Treble 
obviously allows us to boost or cut treble. And control two is the modulation depth. Over to my neck pickup. So to me, the Offspring engine is a real candidate for what I showed with the Shimmer, where you can use the A plus B mode. So if I come over to um, B, and we set that up as a nice room sound. And then go to A plus B, we should have room and Offspring at the same time. Doing that just helps to glue the entire sound together. The Offspring engine is the kind of sound that will just continually develop uh, in the background, especially if you set the mix quite low and the time quite high. Um, it's really good for just creating textures underneath your playing. Let's go over just to the Offspring engine. We'll go back to my bridge pickup. <laughs> Thank you. 
can try that with the A plus B mode. I should say what I just did there was I switched from A mode to A plus B mode whilst holding this calibration uh, control switch on the back. And what that does is that switches from series to parallel routing. So previously I was on series, I believe, and now I'm on parallel. So what you're hearing now is essentially two streams of audio, one with the room algorithm and one with the offspring algorithm. Whereas if I just go back to Offspring, obviously because I've got the mix at 100%, there there's very little attack to my notes there. If we tweak some of the controls a little... So now we have more of a kind of blooming effect. We could go back to A plus B. We could use the control knobs in A plus B mode to mix each of the uh, selected engines. So if we want more of A, we turn up control one. we want more of B, we turn up control 2. And that can all be saved under one preset. Just to finish off with Offspring by itself, back to the neck pickup. This engine is great for stacking. On to the reverse algorithm. So we're going to do our final algorithm now, which is the reverse mode. Here's my dry tone. And here is everything pretty much at 12 o'clock. Okay, so the sound of reverse, everyone's pretty much um, familiar with it by now. Let's have a little tweak. So control one controls the diffusion amount. And you could kind of think of that 
as how much, how smeary is the sound. See, when it's at minimum, you still get a sense of the transients coming from the guitar. Whereas when it's at maximum, everything gets smudged a little bit. Control 2 is essentially modulation depth. Slower the mix a little bit. some pre-delay and let's roll off the treble completely we'll have minimum on the diffusion and let's go over to the neck pickup And actually, what I want to do that I haven't done so far is I want to just swell into it using my guitar's volume control. Obviously, you could use A plus B mode with the Ventris set to series, and you could use the swell algorithm to swell into the reverse, so effectively avoiding the need to even use your volume control on, on your guitar. Let's crank the treble, get rid of all of the modulation, kind of bit more neutral on the time and the mix. Bye. 
say minimum on the time value. So that's kind of gotten rid of all semblance of reverb effectively, and it's given you more of a... I, I would describe it as like a, a multi-tap ramped delay effect at this point. Of course, that's because I've got the diffusion set quite low. But if we increase that, kind of bring back some sense of reverb but there isn't this massive tail it's quite good when you uh, raise the pre-delay on that one then it doesn't become washing your original notes they can still be heard quite clearly 